on this episode of Hola LA. Making bad looks so good. Emilio Rivera of Sons of Anarchy stops by. They had actors playing bad guys, and that was a real bad guy. Bell reminisces with war veteran and TV writing legend Bill Lansford. And swimwear designer Nicole DeRocco shares her secret for the perfect fit. Every time I put on a bikini, I just notice that like pinching <laughs> sensation. Yeah. I'm naturally a very nosy person. I call myself a hack because I'm a host, actress, comedian. I definitely consider myself to be like a sex in the city gal. Well, I don't have a record now, just to clear that up. Hola, LA, and welcome to our show with a twist of flavor and a shot of relevance. Well, ladies, it's time to talk about some high-intensity topics. So how confused are you about Obamacare, and do you even care? I <laughs> care. My mom is paying over $500 a month for insurance, and that doesn't cover office visits or prescriptions. And she's 63 years old, and she's told wow. me that every single year her premium have gone up and up and up and currently all insurance companies can have a lifetime cutoff date so that's they can cut steep. her off but at a certain 500 age. 500 a month? But, 500 but you're, a and month. that's just for your mom and she's self-employed correct? She's self-employed but she's not a millionaire I mean I think she that's makes around one person. That's one person yeah. she makes around fifty thousand dollars a year now imagine if she had other kids to support or a husband. Yeah. Well, I you care talk about, about Obama crazy, yeah? care. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> because we keep saying we're the greatest nation in the world exceptionalism and this country does not provide health care for its citizens the so-called third world countries Mexico Cuba they have better health care than we do at least they offer everybody health care enough it's okay, better but, oh, but everybody Obamacare did benefit us yes, my husband did. and I my daughter can stay on our insurance until she's 26 that's right yeah listen I think I think all of the Angelinos, including myself, care about Obamacare. Yes. But us trying to figure out its complexities and its little bullets it and this and that is really That's confusing. That's another story. Very Absolutely. Oh, because the you, most you, found some, you found something on the internet that explains it Ex in, in nine very minutes, simply. In nine minutes and it basically the video starts off that the Obamacare is a thousand pages to begin with. The proposal. Right, the bill. The pro proposal, the, right. Yeah. Exactly. But what I think is very interesting is that it tells you basically that they're going to put everything on a, on a website, make it very easy for everyone to understand to digest. and they're going to make insurance companies compete for business right. which may make it and that's the wave of the future actually way, those right. are health exchanges where you're going to go on a website right. much like Expedia a shopping price line exactly. and you go and you put things in you, you put your age all this information and then boom you get competing exactly. health insurance well and except Obama. again for women over 65 I mean my mother is in her 80s she's never used a computer so uh, if you're yeah. going to have to do everything on a computer then the senior citizens are going to it's going to be more difficult they're going to be Tech savvy. You can see them in the senior citizen homes just trying to, you know, and then away. the lobby <laughs> doctors. It's, a, it's a whole, you have to really educate. Even people who are like 40 who didn't grow up with computers with have computers. a hard time. But I so think imagine. this is going to be a revolutionary thing if everyone, if it does go into effect. Well, yeah. it, it is going to go into it's effect in 2014, Very but I think complex. it's going to make a huge difference we are going to be confused in the beginning but just like anything in the beginning there's we'll a little adapt. bit of confusion Listen, but we will you know adapt what? it's a wave of the future but is the what GOP it is. the GOP is demonizing them and just uh, just yesterday Bachman said something about oh, it's how it's going to kill people it's and it's going to kill people how can they even say well it's going like to kill big corporations that were making themselves rich off no, of okay, all okay, well, the GOP is talking about hold on let's let's get a little simple here okay mm -hmm. Obamacare will benefit me if the insurance premiums go down if I'm unemployed and I lose my SAG after insurance mm. <laughs> If I can make sense out of it, I mean, what is this deal? Oh, exactly. If you can make sense out of it. If you can it, understand just, it. Okay. So anyway, let us now go to, uh, for our regular dose of the Hola LA I Am moment. Are you ready for that, for some more Latinos? I'm and ready to see. And what a Latino is? Let's check it out. My name is Amy Garcia. I'm an actor. I graduated from Northwestern University with degrees in economics, journalism, and French. And I am an American Latina. I'm Danny Del Toro. I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, California. I am Dodger Elvis, and I am an American Latino. Hi, I'm Patricia Ray, and I'm an actress. I was raised in Queens, New York. I'm from Colombian heritage, and I am an American Latina. Share your I Am an American Latino moment on our Facebook page. Next up, one of the Sons of Anarchy is in the house. Yeah. Uh, 
Rafi. Pedro. Sí. Get the crew. Welcome to our show from the Sons of Anarchy, El Mayan. You are a badass man. Yes, yes, I, I, I try to stay busy, yeah. So if I, they want a bad guy, I'll play him, you know. Yeah, thank you. For, first of all, thank you for having me on. I'm oh, glad to be here. Being here. And you're, awesome. such, you're such a bad guy that you killed your own son on the show? Uh, uh, yeah, a guy played uh, Kevin Alejandro who plays East Side. He uh, was in our show a couple of years yeah. ago. Yeah. Was he really? Yeah, he, 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 didn't he, he didn't talk about that? He no. didn't. We didn't no. give him enough time. How did okay. you end up with a blue eyed son? <laughs> I was with a blue eyed girl. That's fabulous. So, so that was great. But how did you get started in acting? That's a wonderful, fantastic you, story. You know, I, I got clean and sober. Uh, May 15th will be 23 years now. And, uh, wow. and uh, what I did is. Um, I needed to do something, you know. I, you know, I'm an addict, you know. So I got into the acting thing, the theater. Started doing that at theater, and I, it, that was my hook. I mean, that was my new uh, right. high. Yes. And it just kind of it worked out, man. You know. And at the time, they had actors playing bad guys, and I was a real bad guy playing. Right. But playing yeah. yeah. so, 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 That's interesting. And, As a bad guy, were your friends at the time in real life giving you slack? Like, what's that? What, well, what do you mean I was, be, doing I, theater? I, I was. I kind of was kind of like. I was always like a like a bad guy in real life. So nobody really told me nothing. No, nobody. Yeah. 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 He's well, an no actual. He's an So there's no yeah. studying. That's just you playing. You know, yeah, just it's, it's just. But it's just. But in real life, it's just more easier being a nice guy. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I was really a. I was really a bad guy, man. So that's your first role. Was a show called Renegade with Lorenzo Lamas, you know, oh, my first yes. TV show, you know, and, uh, and it's really weird because 21 years later now I'm playing on a biker show, so it's really Aww. weird how it goes full circle, you know. Right. Emilio, so you've been working so much. <laughs> what is your secret or key to success? You know, you know what, you know, I'm going to tell you what it is, you know. Uh, just be nice to everybody, man. You know, it's uh, that goes a long way. You no, did? I tried that, but usually, no, <laughs> I want a little more. You no, know, you know, you no. Know, it's really, it's really, do you, it, do you it, go that extra step? Uh, no, you know, I, I just. Uh, just I just, you know, go and be, be ready. Do your work, you know. Do your be work. Prepared. You know, be prepared. You know, be prepared. And, uh, and it's really a small circle, man. Because mm -hmm. I, I look at it now, and it's all the people I've worked for. They all know each other, so they, they they call you because they can count on you, you know. And what I love about Sons of Anarchy, it might be the show with the most Latino representation, right? We have Benito I Martinez. It. I love it. We've got um, Jimmy Trejo? Smith, Danny, Danny Trejo, Trejo, with more male Latino representation. That's well, we right. also had Wanda de Jesus. Female. Okay, but, but they still need a right. Ramona from Pomona. You know, I, I, think all I don't these, know. I don't know why she's not there. Yeah. I don't know why she, she, she should be on the back all of my these, bag. All these bikers <laughs> need ladies, right? Rucas on the back of their motorcycles. What's up with that? Talking about comedy, you both did comedy together. Well, that's why I was bringing it up because we did. We did comedy. You know, I was. You know, was good about Deanna. You know, she. You know, even 20, 20, 18 years ago, I started doing comedy, and I used to do the show called Latino Nights. And I used to produce and write it. Yeah. And, uh, she would come yep. in. She used to come in and do oh. the tour. And, and I'd to wear kill my it. flannel shirt and my big chola wig and yeah. a Ramona from Pomona. So I would create a vato. I'm chato, that crazy vato who was in love with her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> do you great. do you help people that were in your situation and are trying that's to get why, out of it? That's why. That's why I'm still alive, that. man. You know, mm -hmm. I I, um, I go to prison, juvenile halls, and I and I and I speak. Uh, because when they, when they listen to me, they know I'm the real guy. You right. dig what I'm saying? Right. And I just spoke to 1,200 kids about a month ago in Fontana. And uh, I started talking about a little bit about my gang life. And they started, like, there was a little group of battles there. And they were like, yeah. And then I, and then I shut them up. I go, no, nah, man, don't, don't, don't applaud that. Right. That's the part of my life that mm -hmm. I didn't like, you know? Yes. And um, the congressman that was there said, you know what, bro? It's like, if I would have said that, they would have booed me. But they just kept quiet. And it's, yeah. respect, it's respect. Yes. It's respect, exactly. you know? Exactly. That's respect the importance you. of it coming from you. Because exactly. they glorify, you know, the roles that you do, which you played a lot of gang yes, bangers and all. So they glorify that. But when they hear you say what you did, it's like, hey, that's that's not the, the It's terrible. Part. You know, it's just like, you know, I heard, I heard, a, I mean, I heard a lot of my own people, like people that even, looked, that could have been my brothers, you know, we looked right. alike. Those times that, you know, like, wow, I did that and he's like, yeah. he could have been my brother in real life. You dig what I'm saying? But and if you hadn't turned your life around, bottom line is, you weren't be where you are today. Not at all. No way. Exactly. I, I, I mean, I could, I was, I was, you know, I was, you know, I was, I was, I was a bad guy, man. You know, and plus I did a lot of drugs in uh in uh so I couldn't remember lines back then. I, you know, I'm, first there's a book called, you gotta get this book, it's called um, um, Stop Acting, Start Living mm -hmm. by Bernard Hiller. And he mm -hmm. has a two-page article, I mean, a story about and me. You've, and you've been acting a lot. Give us some, some new projects that you're gonna be doing. Right now, right now, I'm one of my sixth season with Sons of Anarchy. Uh, right now I'm doing a show uh, called Gang Related with uh, 
Jay Hernandez. Uh, oh, yes. Um, Congratulations Tip, tip, tip Curtis, that. yeah. I'm, and I, I play a real nice, I'm the cook of the familia. You know, I'm on that like to cook. Oh, I already know yeah. what you would be your dream role because obviously you are, you already but know we, how to do bad, we but need do you? To, we need to move on. You <laughs> have to come back. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here, Emilio. We look forward to seeing you again, and we look forward to the premiere of Philly Brown. Thank we'll you. be right back to talk about the battles of writer Bill Lansford. That's amazing. He is a military veteran of two wars, an author, poet, and a Hollywood cultural treasure. He is my dear friend, William Douglas Lansford, and at 90 years young, he still has a lot he wants to accomplish. Let's take a look. When, when I left Bonanza, I began to freelance, and I was doing stories for Ironside, Fantasy Island, uh, uh, the two guys, the two detectives, I forget. It's been so long, bro. Bill Lansford is talking about the Starsky and Hutch TV series of the 1970s. It was just one of the many TV hit drama series he wrote for. Born in 1922 in East Los Angeles, Hollywood was part of his backyard and entertainment was in his genes. His Irish father, an LAPD and also an aspiring actor. His mother was part of Spanish language theater in downtown Los Angeles before the Depression. He was, um Really, a, a big star, you know. What was her, her stage name? Uh, Rosalina Melendez. And uh, she was a singer, but also an actress, and also a dancer. And that whole movement was a, like you guys had a beautiful movement of Spanish-speaking actors and actresses who played in eight or 10 di different theaters around LA. Lansford was part of a group of actors and writers who were determined to make a change for people of color in Hollywood. And we became like the Young Turks. We were fighting to get more minorities into the thing, not only Mexicans. Lansford has many stories to tell. He's a member of what we now know in America as the greatest generation. He served as a Marine in World War II. He experienced major battles in American history, which are the topics of his many books. Tell me about the three big battles you were the in. The three big battles were Guadalcanal, which was the first battle. For me, Bougainville was my second battle. And the third battle was uh, Iwo Jima. Which battle did you get your Purple Heart for? Iwo Jima. You know, it was like Gettysburg, you know, it was, it's the, the big battle of the Marines. Another one of Lansford's mission is to build a monument in the center of Los Angeles recognizing the Latino Congressional Medal of Honor recipients. Latinos have received more medal, Congressional Medals of Honor in relation to the number that were in the service than any other group of people. Lansford is hoping to raise enough money to build the Eugene Obregón Monument. We need to raise half a million dollars. Already, he has been successful in erecting a wall honoring all Medal of Honor recipients. Eugene Obregón had been killed in battle protecting his body, who happened to be a, an Anglo kid from Texas. They were both 19 years old. This is gonna be about 10 feet high. And the monument is uh, just a little bit under 20 feet. It'll be the largest monument in Los Angeles. If you would like to help Bill raise the half million dollars he needs to erect, the Eugene Obregón Medal of Honor Memorial, which honors the 40 Latino Congressional Medal of Honor recipients, go to obregoncmh.org and donate so we can get this monument built. And now up next, my Nicolita, the hottest summer swimwear. So I would say that I've walked a few red carpets in my life. One of the very first times that I went to the Golden Globes, I was watching it on TV the day after, and Joan Rivers had one of her first fashion reports. And she has Madonna and says, from goddess, cut to Diana Ortelli, to gaudy. So I was so thrilled. I made it. I've been a fashion victim ever since. I've been featured in the National Enquirer, Us Weekly, People en Español. But my favorite moment is I was getting ready for one of the Golden Globes with a leopard hat, leopard gloves, leopard boots. I like to just take it out there. And my son, my teenage son, looked at me and he goes, Mom, there's a fine line between funky and ridiculous. And I think you just crossed it. Did you notice that 
that these models actually move their hips, yes. unlike some yes. other models that yes. are like so stiff. That's <laughs> so really hot. Beautiful. Exactly. <laughs> and all of these swimwear designs that we just saw were created by Nicole DeRocco, who's here with us today. And they were inspired by your Cuban roots. Yeah, I mean, I started Nicolita about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I started and getting the name for Nicolita, it was like, well, I really want to know where I came from. And I wanted to learn more about being Cuban and what that meant to me. Because growing up, I kind of pushed away being Latina. And now it was my time to embrace it. Where were it. you raised? In Orange County, wow. California. <laughs> and then did you, well, growing up, did you ever envision that you were going to run and own and design your own swimmer? Never, never wow. envisioned that. And it just goes to show, like, you're, you know, everyone's paths cross into different ways. And, and I really liked, I uh, saw the documentary. Um, that it's called My Nicolita, the documentary? It's Passport Cuba, Passport Cuba. The Search Pass for Nicolita. And I saw how she started her line. You actually were in a sorority. Mm -hmm. And she started making little designer bags and then put a little handmade label called Nicolita. And tell us the story about what your friend said and why she decided to name her line that. Uh, well, yeah, I didn't not. I didn't even think I was a designer. I was just making these bags. It was more like a business entrepreneur going to the business school at USC. And someone kept asking me, "What are you going to name your handbag line? What are you going to name the line?" I'm like, "Okay, fine. Um, I can't use Nicole. It just seems too common." And my grandmother would always call me Nicolita, and I just thought, "Oh, that's it's perfect. That's you know what I grew up with." For and the non-Spanish speakers, that's little Nicole, little right? Nicolita. My little chiquitita <laughs> Nicolita. And, Nicolita. Yeah. Nicolita. Well, hold on. and then your friend said, "Why? Why are you calling it that? It sounds so..." Oh yeah, no, I'm. I well, she finally asked me. I said, "Oh, guess what? I had finally figured out a name for my handbag." I said. It's going to be Nicolita. And she said, Wow, well, that sounds so Latin. People aren't going to like that. <laughs> wow. We love it. Well, they like it and now. I, yeah, yeah. And I was like, Oh my God. And she just kind of said, But they it. still bought it, right? Yeah, they, they still, still bought, bought it. Bags. And, you know, it just goes to show when you do, like, put yourself out there, like, you know, a lot more people are going to like it. You can't just listen to the people who kind of put you down. You and really you, have to move did forward. Did you and deliberately you design bathing suits for fuller figure? <laughs> I think bottoms. That booties, I think booties. as I became, you know, going into apparel now into swimwear, mm -hmm. I realized there was every time I put on a. I love bikinis, by the way, mm -hmm. but every time I put on a bikini, I just noticed that like pinching mm -hmm. sensation, yeah. and I'm like, why can't I just extend it just a little bit wider? Thank you. No do, pinch a, hips. do a no pinch fit elastic around the hips, and then we have our really cute heart shaped backside. So that those are like the yes. three things that really sum up what Nicolita is. Well, also the Cuban influence. Can you talk? to me about your designs because as we saw in the video they're really different and unique uh, kind of you. retro mm -hmm. yeah you captured like old glamour from Cuba I think maybe 40s or was that part partially the well, music that, that is right yeah no definitely yes. um when I was growing up I grew up with my parents stories of Cuba and what it was like for them growing up in the 40s and 50s mm. and old photographs and that just really stuck with me as why don't I use that as my inspiration? Mm -hmm. And it was always these black and white images and I and the documentary came about because of that yearning for me to want to connect with being Latina mm -hmm. and learning about my Cuban roots. Mm -hmm. So that became my, my inspiration for the retro. It's a, I'm a Malibu girl, mm -hmm. but I have that retro twist with like my Cuban brand. And Dr. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is that. I know. Sorry. In your documentary, you mentioned um, that, or actually in your documentary, you collaborated with Nuvo TV. Yes. And how did that come about? Um, I had worked with Nuvo before on Model Latina. They had brought me on as a guest judge and featured my swimwear. And I, that year was 2008. Obama had lifted the regulations for Cuban Americans yes. to go back. I'm sorry, 2009, in mm -hmm. April 2009. And it just was that spark of, it was that message that said, we need to do this now, mom and dad. Like, I'm going to go. And I started reaching out to people to film and it. We are so glad that you did. We can check out your documentary on Nuvo TV online, right? Yes. And it's Passport to Cuba. Passport Correct. Cuba, the search for Nicolita. Nicole, we know that the fashion world is very competitive. Do you feel like the Latinos and the Americans have embraced you in the same way? Or is it different? It's a really great question. Um, I like to just put my blinders up and, and focus on me because if I was to look at everyone else, it gets a little bit overwhelming. But I'm all about merging like Latin heritage and fashion and using the platform of the runway to speak to a different audience about our roots and also make it interesting with fashion and what I can bring um, creatively to the marketplace. Wow, and speaking of bringing, I think you brought us some gifts. Yes, right? yes. Oh, wow. Wow. Hey, hey, hey. 
<laughs> well, yeah, well, every, you know, the last, since we were able to go back to Cuba, I was able to shoot the actual catalog oh, wow. in Cuba. So um, I brought you guys a catalog, and then I also brought you guys our documentary. And that's She's your little so model. That's your Nicolita model. Yeah, that you every year I, yeah, every year I find a Nicolita model who is actually Cuban, and it's so great to wow. work with the, work the people and also learn a little bit more about my history and uh, shoot the catalog. Thank you so Good much. You are yes. such a talented oh, woman you. and an inspiration to all Latinas. We want to thank you for being here on Hola LA. Oh, thank Nicole you for having me. I love this. Thank right. you. And hope you had as much fun as we did. Please join us again. Remember, Hola LA is the show with one alma, one corazón, and with four distinct voices. Special thanks to our guest, Emilio, Bill Lansford, Nicole De Rocco, and go to our website at cbsla.com, Hola LA, and chime in on our conversations. Hasta, Hasta luego. luego. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. I think he's confused about Obama here. <laughs> now I'm really <laughs> confused. Well, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a little blue suede shoes. We're going to dance? We should. But listen, I just wanted to wish you ladies a very fantastic season. It's all about Latinas and Ola LA, mama. Woo! Hey, Daddy, I gotta get to the game, lady, so I'll catch you later. Woo! Bye, Ola. <laughs>